Okay, what's up guys? So, good news on the transmission for Mr. Rick. The builder is completely warranting the full repair um, because it was due to a small manufacturer defect that wasn't even completely intentionally their fault at all. So I am totally cool with the whole process. I'm very happy with how everything worked out and I should actually have the transmission back in a few days. All they need to do is just change the main shaft and replace the tail housing that got cracked and it'll go completely back together. All the gear set looked totally cool, which is again, where all the time and money was invested into. So basically it broke in the best place that it could have broken given the circumstances, if that makes sense. But moving forward, some things have changed on Ricky. Starting with that, drag wing is now on and I have the parachute for it. But unfortunately with the parachute in its mount, it hits the drag wing right here. So I'm gonna see if we can shorten this bar down to lower the parachute and then it'll clear the drag wing. But right now, I'm actually about to open the motor for him back up. Again, if you don't know, this is a 13 to one compression, 402 cubic inch LS3. It's got CNC heads. It's got a decent cam in it now and it, sh base, it should make a little over 700 horsepower all motor, which is about 600 to the wheel on a C5. But originally I built this motor with cathedral port heads and then I swapped to the Smetting ported heads. And you can see those big, beautiful ports we cut in there. So the cam in it isn't quite correct for these heads and the different exhaust duration they require compared to a cathedral port head. So. I have our new cam right here. It's 250 intake duration, 262 exhaust, 680 valve lift, 663 on the exhaust. This cam will better match these heads with the extra exhaust duration. And then we put a bunch more lift into it just to really solidify that 600 wheel horsepower number. And I do run roller rockers on the motor. And um, so there's no real negative and reason not to put a bunch of lift in it. Um, so why not? And I don't really drive the car that much because it's always on those suckers. So today I'm gonna try to get, or I am gonna get this motor torn down. I'm gonna get the old cam out of it and then um, we'll see where we get from there. If you work on your own cars and don't have one of these Milwaukee 3.8 stubbies, I highly recommend it. These things are badass. They're super lightweight, so your hand doesn't get heavy holding a big impact, and they can still crack loose 200 pound bolts, and it's 3.8, tiny M12 battery. Love it. radiators out, got the valve covers off. Next, I'm gonna pop off all the rocker arms, pull the push rods out. I'm gonna leave the heads and lifters in the motor. I got the long rods you can stick in to hold the lifters up. And then we'll be able to inspect the valve stem tips and make sure everything's wearing correctly. I do need to change the valve springs to a higher spring rate than these ones. Um, but moving on right along. Should have the cam out in no time. All of the 
valve stems look totally cool. They look perfect and realistically this, these heads only have like 30 miles on them. So they should look brand new, <laughs> but moving forward, I need to lower the cradle a little bit because as you can see, the balancer is right behind the power steering rack. So you have to lower the cradle down, pick the motor up a little bit, and then you can pop the balancer off the front. Okay, got the timing cover and the balancer off, cradles on the ground. I'm gonna line up the motor on top dead center, and then I can pop this camshaft out. Have you ever had a plan of action that you wanted to execute super thoroughly and efficiently? And when you started to execute your plan, everything didn't go as planned and you panicked, and you had an anxiety attack and you cried on the floor of your garage and now your cylinder head is off the motor. We're living it right now, boys. So I had those stupid rods, right? I, I don't know if it was user error or if they just don't work with Johnson link bar lifters, but for the life of me, I could not get them to work. And I got one stuck in the motor at one point and I couldn't pull it out. So I had to just latch onto it with vice grips and just start awkwardly tapping it with the mallet. And after like 30 minutes, it finally loosened up and I could breathe again. But it's kind of a blessing in disguise because with the bigger cam and the lift, I am upgrading the valve springs to the pack 1209X springs, which will give me about 500 pounds open pressure at the lift I'm gonna run, which realistically on the regular Johnson lifter probably would be okay, but it really should have an axle oiling short travel lifter in it. So I got a set of those coming and this gives me the opportunity to swap those in. So I have the really nice axle oiling lifters with the super high spring pressure. Otherwise, what, what happens is there's so much spring pressure that the axle that the roller wheel lifter travels on just gets abused. And if you have an axle oiling lifter, there's a direct oil galley built in the lifter to, to provide high pressure lubrication to the axle. Anyways, long story short, more better, I can turn more RPM, more pressure, more lift, all the good stuff. So I've got that head off, it's over there. I've got this head to pop off next and I can finally yank that cam out there and replace it with another one. Okay, update, both heads off the motor. Old cam is now free to come on out of here. Just like so. This cam is 245, no, I'm sorry, 247, 255, duration at 50, but it only has like 614 thou valve lift on the intake and exhaust. I originally spec'd it for a turbo build, and so I, I went really conservative on the lift just because I could make the power elsewhere with the turbo. But since now I want to go really fast NA, we're gonna swap in a really hot NA cam 
And again, that new cam is, uh, what the heck? Why are we stuck? There it goes. The new cam is 250, 262 with about 680 valve lift. So out with the old and with the new. Okay, camshaft is in, timing cover's back on. Heads are off, they're over there. I need to swap the springs on them and then wait for my new lifters to come in so I can recheck piston and valve clearance. I'm gonna do something pretty cool with the rocker system that I'll show you all in a separate video next, but it's gonna be pretty cool. I don't think anyone's done it yet on LS stuff. So I'm pretty excited to see how it works and give it a shot. Anyways, that's all I've got for this video of the road to 200 mile an hour. And I'll see you guys next time.